everyone. How's it going? And welcome to Community Conversations. My name is Liz from the Divinity Foundation. So Community Conversations is an opportunity for you, the community, to hear from contributors in the internet computer ecosystem, as well as ask them questions live. So Divinity Foundation and United Esports just announced a gaming competition called Achievement Unblocked with a prize pool of $10 million for video game developers. Today, we have CEO Felix LaHaye and CCO Justin Wachowski of United Esports and Michael Hunt from Divinity here to talk about the program. So very, very warm welcome to Felix and Justin. So great having you on the show. And of course, to um, our very own Michael Hunt. Thank you, Liz, for having us. Thanks. Absolutely. So Justin and Felix, maybe you can give a little bit more context or color around Achievement Unblocked for those of us listening in who may not be familiar. Cool. So Achievement Unblocked is a really a multi-part program to help build real games on the internet computer. And what we're creating is not only a, of course, a funding and grant pool for those game developers that are going to be building those games on the internet computer. We're also documenting it in near real time. Uh, we're an LA media company in gaming. So we're gonna make this amazing series that people are going to be able to watch, enjoy and participate in and seeing that journey. So the first step of course is uh, right now, we're in this first stage, we're receiving applications from, uh, from game developers who are interested in making great games on the internet computer and then receiving, uh, potentially receiving grants for, to make these games. So that's the overall, uh, the overall quick intro. Um, I'd love to tell you more, but yeah. Awesome, cool. So Michael, how did you become connected with Felix and Justin from United Esports? Yeah, you know, so I think going back just a couple of months, um, you know, post Mercury launch, um, we were really taking a look at, you know, the early activity in the developer uh, portion of the community. We wanted to see, you know, what people were really interested in, where some of that excitement was. Um, and as I'm sure many people on the call today know, um, you know, gaming was just one of those early use cases that we just really saw the community start gravitating around. Um, and I know that at this stage has probably been maybe two or three community organized hackathons dedicated specifically to gaming. So, you know, from there, I think um, all of us here at, you know, Definity, especially on kind of the community side, we really wanted to try and find some ways to, you know, help supercharge that and give it a little bit more juice because although, you know, these amazing hackathon projects were being spun out rather quickly, um, we wanted to try and, you know, give people who are interested in building out, you know, games on the internet computer, um, many more resources to do it. So we really started taking a look at what partnership opportunities there might be out there. Um, and, you know, I'm excited to, you know, announce that, you know, we were able to, you know, connect with um, the team over at United Esports on this. But, you know, from our point of view, we just saw that, you know, there's a lot of really great opportunities in the GameFi space, and we wanted to make sure that, you know, um, the devs who are building on the internet computer were able to just really capitalize on that early, whether it's, you know, and I think the internet computer is very well suited for, you know, these types of projects, right? So it's, you know, whether people are, you know, trying to, you know, make these more advanced style NFTs and incorporate them into their games. Um, I can imagine items as NFTs, characters as NFTs, trading things on third party marketplaces, um, you know, taking a look at the composability conversation, um, having, you know, some of these different elements be interoperable across different landscapes. There's so many different things that could be done. So um, on our end, it was really just, okay, let's find, you know, some appropriate partners who can really help us, um, you know, tell the story of what is possible on the internet computer um, as it relates to gaming. And I think that's why the team over at United Esports did make a lot of sense. Absolutely. And I think what's really interesting to note is that some of the earliest adopters in cryptocurrency and blockchain were gamers because they understood the value of a currency that doesn't necessarily have, you know, a real world counterpart. Um, so for you guys over at United Esports, Felix and Justin, what was the opportunity that you guys saw in blockchain gaming and why did you decide to partner with Definity Foundation? 
Yeah, uh, Felix, do you want to give sort of that background on on UE's side and and you know why this was such a a natural fit for us, and then maybe I can dive in a little bit more in our vision. Yeah, sure. I mean, UE is is United Esports. Um, you know, we, we say it about five hundred times a day, so <laughs> I guess we have to, to make a, a shortened version. You know, our, our mantra: we we've been in the esports and gaming um, media space for for a few years. And our mantra is always to, you know, to, to create something that we, we want to see, right? We literally said, if it's fun for us, it's fun for them. And what we put out in the space is, you know, shows, programs, live competition, venues, et cetera, that make the gaming and, and esports audience, uh, you know, enjoy themselves. It's esports and, and gaming culture, entertainment, education. And of course, we're, uh, you know, uh, we, we we connected with with Michael and then uh, progressively many people across the Definity team, and it, you know we were talking about other things at first, and it became clear that the 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 internet computer and the blockchain you know, gaming intersection was you know the the great next step. Um, simply, uh, gaming has been around for for. For, for a second, you know, people will, will tell you it's brand new and it's, what is this new thing of gaming? You know, it's been around my whole life. I'm not that young, young enough. Uh, but here, what we're talking about is creating a completely new ecosystem for these games to be built. I mean, Michael was hinting, uh, talking about it, you know, how there's uh, items that can be transferable, different types of games that can be built. Of course, it's built on the, on the, um, on the core principles of the internet computer. Uh, so we really wanted to create uh, the Definite Foundation and I'll say an in incentive and a, uh, give a, a nice push for these games to start being built. And you will always hear me say, the goal is to build real games, right? We're not just making a, a show and say, oh, cool, this is what it could be like. This is a, a program and show that um, brings the, the, dev, the devs, the people making those real games on the internet computer as the, the heroes of the program. Justin, I'm, I'm infringing upon you a bit, but- That's okay, uh, that's okay. I'll, 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 let you, I'll let you go, sorry. <laughs> no, I, no, it's great. And it, it, that's, it, that's why the, the fit here with United Sports and obviously uh, Michael and his team at the Divinity Foundation was such a, a natural fit, right? Every day, uh, you know, what we do is, is put content into the space very specifically for the gaming audience. Um, my team is dedicated to make sure that whatever we do, whether it's working with brands looking to, to come into the space and, and, you know, form relationships with the gaming audience or, you know, uh, you know, publishers looking to announce their games or whatever, everything we do is really built specifically to engage and provide a lot of entertainment. Um, and Achievement Unblocked is no different. I mean, when we looked at this program, you know, um, you know, we're, we're Felix and I are, are the executive producers on the, the series as a whole. We started from the ground up wanting to create a program that the heart of it is really based on giving the game developer community a really unique opportunity to see their dream games really come to life uh, with the proper funding that's needed to do that, right? I mean, even if you're not a game developer, most people who grew up in the gaming ecosystem uh, ever since like Gen 1 gamers, right? probably at some point has thought, wow, this is the type of game I wish, or I wish I could pluck this from that game and this from that game and put them together. And that would be the coolest game ever. And that's really the, the heart of what we're trying to do here is using the, the great technology that the IC and, and blockchain gaming has in its potential. Granted, we all know that this is still a fairly new space, right? So in some ways, our uh, participants that are going to join us in this program are really like pioneers starting to build foundational uh, structures within the IC that, you know, ideally generations behind them will be able to continue to build upon. And that's a really exciting thing. We think it's exciting for, uh, you know, for potential participants to join us and really start developing that future. Um, but at its core, it's still about really re realizing a dream um, and, and providing the means in, in order to, to really capture that dream. And like Felix said, at the end, you know, launch an actual game that's playable by the audience. We think that's incredibly exciting. Um, so obviously it is a competition series. There is going to be some, some fun things that we get to play on because, you know, we get to, to in essence, 
uh, play on some of the the normal, uh, I'll say, functions that a competition series would, uh, you know, would play into. So, so uh, you know, we are laying out the series in, in a way that, in essence, it's a, a pretty aggressive timeline, but. Uh, you know, going into it with the scope that we know that, that you know, our participants may try to achieve uh, and some of the things they may have already worked a little bit on and can bring into the program uh, is doable. So what we're looking at right now, uh, I'll give everyone just sort of a, some context so that they understand is that um, technically speaking, submissions are available, early submissions, like pre-submissions are available now uh, through a link that I believe is going to be provided in chat here. Uh, but I'll say it out loud and Michael, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, but it's definity.org slash achievement unblocked, right? I believe that's correct. Yes. Uh, and so if there is, uh, you know, early interest, you can go to that site now and sign up. Uh, I believe all it does is, is grab an email or whatnot so that we can contact you when, when the, the next uh, phase unlocks in which submissions actually are open. Um, submissions open uh, towards the end of 2021, so the December area. Right now, I believe the target date is around that 15th, um, uh, but but certainly you know end of 2021, and it will last until the end of Fe uh, February 2022. Uh, and so you'll be able to submit uh, you know your your game idea, your big dream that that you would love to see uh, you know achieved, and introduce yourself in essence to the world. Uh, who you are, you know, why this game, uh, you know, and, and a little bit of your story, right? Now, <clears throat> we're accepting both solo developers and team-based developers, I believe, up to yeah. four, four teammates, four. right, Michael? Yeah. yeah, four. So this is something that really, if you have a team of, of partners out there and you're like, man, let's let's try to make this a thing, you know, turn, turn this dream into a reality, get together, start, con you know, the conceptual process now, align your visions, create uh, your, your submission content, send it in uh, towards, you know, the, the December area when, when submissions are open, uh, and then we'll receive them on that side. At that point, uh, at, through the submission process, when it closes, uh, the the Definity Foundation and, and United Sports will look at that and we will basically vet, you know, all the submissions and 100 game developers, up to 100 game developers will be led into the program. And so that's not a small number. If anyone's ever watched no. any competition series ever, normally people don't go for that big of a number, uh, but we're really excited because the goal is truly to give as many people an opportunity to start, you know, the development process. And, and what's really great about this is we're, we're really committed to taking, you know, although it's a competition and yeah, that means there's a little bit of a, a little bit of, um, you know, I don't know, aggressive plays here, right. That we could see, you really have to hit meet deadlines, impress judges and whatnot. Um, when you start this process, if you look at how the Definity Foundation is set up and the, the way that you could actually find uh, potential funding, even outside our program, I think Michael, correct me, I'm wrong, but it's like, it, it's an enormous number of, of potential funding that any developer can really come and apply, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I think one of the things that I'm very excited about as it relates to this program is that we, the community, will be able to support all of these developers um, in reality. So, yeah, you know, um, we're looking at, you know, 100 individuals slash teams that are coming into the program directly. But, um, you know, once people are, you know, really within our ecosystem, they can really start taking a look at some of the other options, whether that's our developer grants program or um, even, you know, continuing the development of their game and incorporating some of this, um, you know, kind of DeFi functionality and perhaps, you know, um, going out and, um, tokenizing on the community with the community fund and the SNS. Um, and I think that will also be a really great way for some of these developers to, you know, to continue building, um, you know, should the program um, not necessarily, should they not necessarily win, you know, this program. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I think it's really about um, telling these stories of what is possible, getting, giving people the opportunity to start building. Um, and, you know, once we are, once they are here in the ecosystem, just continuing to support them, right? Um, and I'm super excited for that part because um, we're already seeing so many people in our community um, laying some of the groundwork on this. Um, some, you know, individuals and some more, um, uh, I, I would say more established organizations, <laughs> uh, um, you know, gaming firms and um, game development companies. So, you know, I think a lot of, um, 
that infrastructure is there um, and more is to come. So, you know, I think this is going to be a really natural place for supporting um, these blockchain developers who are interested in building games and yeah. well into the future. Yeah, super, super amazing. So um, just to clarify timeline. So I know that the submissions will open later this year and the submission deadline will close. I think you said next February, right, Justin? Yeah, end of so, February, yeah. It's, I think it's Mar- February. right now March 1st is like the, okay. the cutoff. Okay, so how long What? How long is the actual competition itself and how Great. is it structured? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the show rollout, we're still in early development, so I can't release any like episode one is going to land <laughs> here. But what I can uh, announce is, is in essence is that the development time period is pretty uh, locked in, you know, uh, to what it is because we wanted to give our developers literally every second we could in order to right. develop and launch these games. So I know that development will start uh, April 1st, uh, maybe second. So we make sure the world knows it's not a joke. Uh, but but in essence, uh, April is is the the beginning of the development phase officially because at that point our up to 100 uh, you know participants will really be you know notified and they will have already received the first round of funding uh, to start that process and I, that's really cool and I'll, I'll back up one second uh, to to what Michael just said is that what we loved about how we're structuring this program is in essence let's say you make it into that develop that that first wave right and you don't maybe make it into the second wave but you've now maybe pulled a few of your friends together you've wrapped your heads around this vision and for whatever reason you know maybe there was a, pe- a few people that just happened to get a little bit closer to the 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 target than than you did you know, that's what's so great about this is that if it was a cooking competition and you were cut out in the first judging panel, you could still cook, but it's not really going to matter. Here, you have the ability to say, that's okay, I'll go apply for for funding and and continue my vision and and, and potentially still get my game launched. And that's what we think is really great and positive here. Um, the with that. thing is that it's not like a, it's not just the pyramid where everyone comes in and one one team, one person wins at the end. Literally, if you get selected to be part of the first uh, cohort, uh, the first group, you're unlocking immediate grants. Then there's a, a second step mm-hmm. where you know uh, uh, some teams make it and some don't, and they unlock a much uh, a much bigger grant. And then there's the last final phase where it's it's the final grant. And even that final grant doesn't need to be one team. There might be several teams that have uh, what it takes. I mean, that we think, okay, this is a great game. It will be a huge success as this IC built game. And, and that's one of the, the core ideas. That's why you'll, you know, I, I've warned you guys, but that's why we're building real games here. It's, it's not just for entertainment. It's to really help fuel that ecosystem and yeah. really bring, you know, these devs and we, we can talk about other things we're putting in place. Um, but that's really something that's important to stretch. It's not just all, you're putting all your eggs in this basket and hope it wins at the end. We're really here, the Defini Foundation and, and, and UE, you know, help, helping around, uh, sorry, all along the way. So I love the fact that it's not zero sum. There's a lot of opportunities for teams to jump in, a lot of different ways to earn prizes. I wanted to back up just a second. Justin, I think you were referring to, you know, different episodes. So is this kind of, so first of all, you're like speaking my language. Second of all, is this like structured like a reality TV show where we can like follow the progress of the teams in real time as they build their games? So yeah, the uh, the series itself, um, we can talk about the program as far as what Achievement Unblocked is from a structural standpoint, and the series from we'll say a slightly more uh, fan f- uh, focused. Uh, entertainment point, right? As far as the program goes, there is going to be support uh, through through tech support from from the Definity Foundation. There's going to be um, there's going to be you know seminars and things like that, onboarding to be able to help uh, new and existing developers really be able to to achieve the the games and the goals that they have for this series, right? So there's and you know and the funding that comes with that. Uh, so, you know, on the program side, in order to continue this effort to really have, uh, you know, blockchain based games, uh, there will be, a, a, you know, some some uh, help on that front from the series side, we will be uh, all participants in, in the program, in essence, uh, will also be 
captured and capturing some of their own journey of what it's really like to develop games, to see a dream like this uh, become reality, right? And so uh, our team, in essence, uh, is in charge of basically capturing that journey from a, a real like global and holistic uh, point of view and being able to show the world, hey, this is what game development is like. This is what it's like to develop on the frontier of new technologies and, and really be able to, to think truly outside the sort of norm in game development currently. Um, and, and, you know, all the excitement and some drama that goes with that, right? Um, so yes, there is a, a viewable element to that that we're, that we're working to, to capture. But here it goes slightly beyond just, you know, watching people succeed or fail. What's kind of cool about this is that as we're capturing it all in real time and airing, airing it all in near real time, as, as real as we can possibly air it, um, what that actually allows is that these developers ideally will be able to build a fan base based around the games that they're working to launch. So upon launch, they will already have sort of a mechanism built in to have people who have been following this process say it's launch day and I want to play, right? Which is normally in the, the gaming world, you know, we hear about something, it's like, okay, cool. You know, the, the teaser is like three years before development, like, or before, you know, any uh, launch gets ready. So then they have to come back with another marketing push and say, by the way, we're still existing. We, we didn't die, you know, uh, we're here and we're going to launch and then you launch and you hope for the, the success there. Uh, the idea behind the series is, yes, it, it allows us to capture sort of what that process is like. And some of the stories of truly having a dream, maybe, you know, your whole life to wanting to make a game, finally getting the funding, you know, to be able to do so. And then, you know, letting us capture that and, and release it to the world, but building a fan base based around the very dream and game you're hoping to achieve so that upon launch, you have, you know, immediate fans that that ideally would be able to play it, which we love. We, we think that that's just such an exciting way to, to uh, look at game development and really kind of uh, open up the curtains a bit. No, completely amazing. First of all, I am sold. I want to be a part of this competition. <laughs> like this is, this is, this is just like, I'm just loving, loving everything that you guys are saying. So I'm, I'm super curious. Um, United Esports team, Justin Felix, have you ever done something like this before? Um, I love how in the world of gaming, the stars are like the, you know, the champions of the esports competitions, the streamers, but now you're turning a spotlight on the actual game developers themselves. I yeah, <laughs> I don't think this has ever been done. Before. I was gonna say uh, we've done so, stuff like this. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. So so cool to hear. Let me let me just take a, a minute to to say something because you said something interesting, right? It's like normally the the focus is always on you know other parts of it. Uh, something interesting and, and I think cool that we're doing with this series is we are putting the spotlight on the developers themselves and and really letting their journey be be the hero spots, right? Um, because it's competition, we do have a, a panel of judges. Uh, I can't announce anyone yet, but, but in essence, we do have a panel of judges and we are seating that panel with experts across sort of this touch points within the gaming community. And I think this is really kind of a cool way to, to deal with it is that in essence, we will have sort of, you know, experts that, that can really speak to the IC specifically um, from the Definity Foundation and, and really be able to bring um, that, that technical understanding of the space and what's possible there uh, from that point of view, right? We are looking at uh, a, a judging spot within the game development community so that they can really speak towards what it's like to go through game development in that process and be able to speak to those pieces. And then we will also have a, a, a judge from the streaming community whose entire occupation basically is based on playing games for the entertainment of others and being able to speak to the fun and, and what it's like to actually be on the player side of that. Um, and in, through that, that panel, we're hoping to hit basically, you know, a little bit of each point of what games do, who plays them, how they're made and be able to, you know, accurately uh, step through those milestones, um, you know, throughout that, that series. So, so, you know, they're definitely the, the, the spotlight um, and they actually get some feedback, I believe, from really, you know, great areas that normally have the spotlight in some ways. 
That's that's just incredible. Um, and as a side note, I am a contributor to this crypto native reality dating show. So if you guys want any ideas in terms of how to <laughs> engage the audience, we can definitely chat after this Perfect. call. Um, so que question for you guys, who can actually apply for this competition? Like if I'm under 18, can I apply? Can anybody from any country apply? So Michael, I don't, know if we can fully answer that yet, right? Because we are still, uh, again, in our development. I don't know that terms wise we have fully, I'll let you handle it. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we can chat a little bit about this though. So um, although we may not be able to answer the exact, um, you know, who as it relates to, you know, 18 or over, but I actually think it might be 18 or over, um, especially once we start getting into the conversation of uh, rewards and ICP and caches. And I do want to chat about that, but I think the thing we should really spend a little bit of time chatting about um, right now, um, Justin Felix, is just who as it relates to the world of game development, right? Um, so one thing that, you know, I really want to make sure the community is aware of that, you know, for this program, I imagine that we are really going to see um, members of, you know, the gaming community and gaming developers entering and being interested in this competition who have never touched the IC before. Um, and this is really important because um, we as a community now have a really great opportunity to figure out, well, how are we going to be supporting all of these new gaming developers who are probably very new to blockchain-based gaming or gaming on the IC specifically? Um, and I do imagine that there will be some really great opportunities for all of us as a community to figure out how we can support that, both on the Definity side with um, kind of official documentation, um, but also on the community side, right? Um, a lot of great games are already out there, and I can't imagine that, you know, there are things we can do from creating tutorials and code reviews and open sourcing our code, um, chatting a little bit about the frameworks that we're utilizing, um, whether it's um, Unity or Real Engine um, and doing some webinars, seminars, there's so many things that we can do. Um, and I'm not sure if we actually answered how long the uh, program runs for, but it's a fairly long program. So I think along the way, uh, we will be able to hold some webinars, some seminars, and really get people um, caught up on this front. Um, and then I'll also leave maybe uh, the targeting and the marketing elements of this to uh, Justin and Felix um, to kind of chat through um, this mindset around, yeah, we are targeting, you know, gaming developers broadly. Some will come from our ecosystem um, already, um, and some will probably be coming from spaces where blockchain-based gaming hasn't been a consideration quite yet. Yeah. Um, Felix, do you want to, is there anything you want to add here? Because I there's I can talk about this all day long. I love yeah. the, the concepts in the show here. So loving the energy, loving the energy. I could chat about this for hours. <laughs> um, you know what? I, what I'll add to that, Michael, is that you know that's what I think makes this um, this program interesting, right? Is that uh, let's put it this way: in the gaming space, we hear about, in essence, uh, where is blockchain's role, you know, currently, and where is it going to be? Uh, you know, there is NFT news every single day across the board from our space, right? Uh, we hear it we, like it, it's just like what's the daily NFT blast? What no one really has has been able to figure out is well, where does, you know, all these great new developments, where do they land in the current ecosystem? And, you know, you can see everyone from, you know, Xbox, I believe just made a statement like two days ago of where their, you know, how their thoughts on it and whatnot. Um, what I think the best move forward here is that, you know, to, to take all the new technology that, that can, comes out and changes daily um, and build something from the ground up, knowing, you know, what that technology can do, right? Forcing it into a, a current and existing structure is, is incredibly complex and hard. And I can see why there's some pushback from, you know, more established developers for that very reason, right? They have to see why it would be worth, you know, in essence, either opening up their, their, their source and, and, and being able to, to, you know, change the system that they're currently uh, built upon and probably succeeding on, right? Um, but what our developers get to do is literally look at it from the ground up and say, if this is where I'm interested in, you know, integrating like NFTs or, you know, what, whatever they may, they, something that might be of interest, they get to start from the ground up and, and create a game that has the ability to utilize those in a more, I'd say, like intelligent way, instead of just finding a way to force it in, which sometimes can feel a bit, um, you know, maybe, um, 
I, I don't know, ill-advised depending on, on how you're using that kind of stuff, right, in the current ecosystem. So what's cool about that is, yes, like from the IC community, people here right now, like if they're, you know, in this very chat, uh, or who watch this video, who are game developers, you know, this program's for you. Go to the definity.org slash Achievement Unblocked and, and sign up right now if you know people that are doing that. Um, and we have a lot of efforts that are, you know, very soon launching um, to also talk to just game, anyone out there. Maybe they've never built a game before, but they have always had the interest, always had the inkling to say, oh, if I wish you know, like maybe they, they get home from their job and they, they try to move that needle just a little bit more to build what their dream was. This is their opportunity to say, wait, I, I could potentially, you know, take the funding and, and now focus that towards my dream. That's what we want to see is more people interacting with the IC, more people basically building sort of that next generation or next evolution of gaming. Um, and, and I think that, you know, we have a really compelling program here to be able to do that. So could we also talk about what are the judges looking for out of this competition? So for any prospective applicants on the call, is there some kind of judging rubric that they'll be graded against? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I've said that, but the goal is to create real good, you know, great game on the internet computer. So that each step is gonna become a little bit more uh, difficult. You know, I think the, the the first step to be included in the first group is, creating a game or having the potential for a game that would be great. I mean, a question we frequently get is what kind of games could we be making? And truly, uh, you know, within reason, anything. If the game is great, if it's fun, uh, we could include it in the, in the program. So at first, I think we're going to be, you know, we can't reveal too much, but mainly looking at the what the game could be with the potential and progressively, we're going to get deeper in the code, be deeper in the gameplay, because we're talking about you know pretty large sums of pretty large and increasing sums of threat. So I don't know what I'm uh, what I'm allowed to say just at this point before we're, we're launching right right up front. But of course, it, it is at first very front loaded on potential, and at the end on the actual quality of the game and its and its real integration with the internet computer. Michael, I mean, based on that, should we talk some of those details? You want you want me to, to dive in a little bit more to those? Specific? Yeah, yeah. I, I think we are okay to chat a little bit about um, total prize pool, um, the different funding amounts um, as it relates to the different um, levels of the program. Great. Cool. So uh, to give a, a little bit, and I, I'm going to asterisk this with the fact that this is still in development. Some of this may shift uh, between now and, the, and launch. So just just to be uh, fair to everyone, but uh, as things stand right now, um, what I, what we can say is, uh, again, development would start uh, in a April 2022. That's when the official development phase would start. It will run for 13 months. And so it's a 13 month uh, development program. In that time, there will be three major milestones in which all the developers will be able to present to our panel of judges. And uh, those who continue on in the series will unlock that next round of funding uh, all the way till the end. So we are accepting up to 100. We, we may not, you know, get, you know, take all 100 or whatnot, but we, right now we are committed to, to taking up to uh, 100 uh, uh, contestants that we believe are truly in it to see a dream come true, have a vision, you know, and, and have, you know, in, in some ways the, the capability or the drive to learn how to, you know, to, to do this in a way that really gets a launched game. Um, so we go from 100 uh, to that first mile, sorry, at 100, in essence, if you're accepted uh, right now, you will unlock $10,000 of funding to start. Now we know, you know, that's not the, the, the most insane amount in the world, but what we thought is it's a, it's a fair amount to say, look, we're committed to as soon as you are accepted, here you go. Uh, that first developmental phase is in essence very conceptual and you know um and and starting to prove some some very simplistic uh concepts right in the game development uh space and so we thought that that 10k gets you you know in essence so far to be able to get to that first milestone where you can prove okay we told you our vision up front here's the steps we've taken here's how we've maybe you know some level design or, or you know whatnot whatever we can uh whatever the game really requires to get to that first milestone at that milestone, we will go from 100 down to 30. 
which is a drastic cut. But uh, what we uh, hope to achieve here is although we will obviously drop uh, significantly in the amount of people continuing in the series, again, anyone that's dropped still has the ability to go to the Definity Foundation and, and, and continue funding on that side uh, through their application process. But for the series, uh, we will go that first round uh, of milestones that pass that first round will unlock $100,000. So getting through from, from 10,000 to 100,000 immediately on that first round. Then they'll obviously begin that next development phase, uh, making it to this, the second milestone in which uh, those who pass will go from 30 to 10, but they will go from the 100,000 to 300,000 uh, immediately unlocked for those who pass that, that second milestone. Uh, and then uh, the final milestone basically will go from that 10, not to one, not to two, but to three finalists that win. We really didn't want, we didn't want to drive this to say, okay, there's only one person that somehow can, you know, uh, be accepted, you know, and, and, and you know, ultimately uh, sort of win this series. We really know games are different. The developers are different. Storylines are different. Um, and in essence, you know, anyone that's making it to that final milestone, the chances are we want to see them launch those games, right? And so we said, we're going to uh, open up to three finalists that, that in essence, are, are eligible to, to win and they will win uh they will be awarded a million dollars uh uh as a as a prize, that final part of the prize pool so 10k 100k 300k a million uh and we go and from it's up to that number of participants that's important to note yep. too is that yep. you know we're not going to move a, a a a game from one one stage to the other just to fill a you know a, a number the games need to be good so yep. This is up to number. We hope and we think there there'll be uh, enough and too many maybe great games for each of the the stages. But you know we will be quite quite harsh in the in the judging towards the end of, of the competition. Exactly. Oh, super 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 exciting to hear. So um, I do know there's a lot of questions from the community. Do you have any last words that you guys wanted to say before we dive into the community questions? Well, yes. So the one thing that I wanted to make sure I absolutely shared, and you know, we're going to go ahead and um, speak on this now, and perhaps you'll see me tweet about this afterwards. We'll get it out um, in all of the comms um, for after the community conversation. It's just a call to action for people to um, sign up you know, both for um, the actual program, if you are a gaming developer or you have a game or you have a friend who has a game, you know, push them to sign up. And again, that's just over at definity.org slash achievement unblock. Um, however, if you are, you know, a developer in our ecosystem or someone who has been actively playing around with the internet computer and you are interested in supporting this next wave of gaming developers, um, I'm just going to drop a uh, simple form in the chat and i encourage anyone who is in those shoes to you know sign up to really assist and there's all sorts of things that we can do right um from mentoring and code reviews and tutorial videos and um doing walkthroughs of some of the hackathon projects that we've um that you may have worked on in the past um i think there's a lot of really interesting ways in which we can help support this next wave of gaming developers um and ensure that you know they have a really great experience both on the internet computer and and with our community and ecosystem when they arrive. Um, so I really encourage people, you know, if you are, um, if you have some experience playing around with the internet computer in a technical capacity, but you're not necessarily interested in building out a video game, um, to go ahead and fill out this Google form and we'll go ahead and find some different ways to get that form to use. So, um, and after that, you know, I'll be in touch, you know, as we start getting closer, we're gonna find a lot of great ways to continue to support everyone new that will be joining the ecosystem as a result of this. But I think that is it for me. And yeah, we, we can, unless Felix, Justin. Oh. No, we're, we're incredibly excited to, uh, you know, to obviously have the program get started. We can't wait to see, you know, the, the creativity and the, you know, in essence, the, the games that, you know, are a result of this. Um, there's some fun news coming very shortly. Uh, uh, Felix and I are, are you know, uh, getting close to announce, you know, some of the more details like our show's host you know, the, the panel of judges and things like that. Um, so not yet, but we're getting very excited when, when that announcement comes. Uh, and so, you know, it, there's definitely ways to stay connected, obviously doing the pre-signups.
um, is, is the most important, whether you're interested in, in participating and, and actually being a part of the series, or like Michael said, looking for ways in which you within the community uh, could help. Uh, and, and I believe that there's, there's so many opportunities to be involved one way or the other here. Cool, amazing. Well, I'm just feeling, you know, the energy in this room right now. <laughs> super, super excited. Cool. So we have a ton of questions. I uh, want to make sure we address each and every one of them. For those of us who are tuning in, feel free to continually drop questions in the chat or the Q&A box. We're monitoring that. So first question, what kind of games do you want to see? Is there like a particular style? Um, I know somebody had floated the idea of like a children's game. You know, you want to see, you want to see something more like League of Legends. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. I think you know what we want to see is diversity in the games. You know, if uh, if every single game is the same, it's not as exciting of an ecosystem. So, um, you know, within reason, any types of game that is a, a quality game could could work. Uh, we're obviously not going to promote uh, games that have a, a, a weird or, or, or super negative uh, connotation, but any game that would be uh, fun and uh, and add something to the gaming ecosystem whatever the genre from from SPS from from um, from MOBAs from card games from children's games from play to earn from you know uh, building games truly you know any kind of game could be considered to to win in this competition and we actually encourage to have the diversity in these games yeah I, I would say just from you know my side I always look you know forward to what the you know in essence uh, the community has, we see a lot in art, in indie games, especially a really defined art style that I always tend to, to enjoy. Um, you know, and, and sometimes with the more AAA polished games, there's a certain level everyone kind of comes to expect. And so it's not maybe as, uh, you know, groundbreaking or unique, but what we really see when game developers get opportunities like this, or I mean, that, not that this happens that often, but in essence, when um, indie game developers find a way to still create something, they tend to be much more artistic in nature, whether it's through the gameplay itself, the, the true artistic wrapping that goes around that gameplay, um, or even some of the storytelling that happens. There's a, there's a real sense of like personal touch that I, I just think that a program like this really is set up to, to, you know, lean into and to see some really unique things uh, come out of it as a result. So that's the part that to me, I'm, I'm just excited to see. That's amazing. Um, so question, um, if somebody has absolutely no experience whatsoever with video game development, are they still encouraged to apply? I mean, I think you'd be encouraged to find it, you know, leverage all the resources to build a team. Because at the end of the day, uh, a real game needs to be built. So I think you know th there is no restrictions here on being one person or a, a team of people working towards the game. So you know, uh, a, a quick sidebar. I mean, when you look at the the game building ecosystem, some of the best artists in the world, some of the best musicians in the world, some of the best screenwriters in the world are building games today. So building a great game takes a lot of different skills. So you might not be able to code yourself, but there's, you know, there'll be resources and there are resources to find and build that team um, so, so that you're at the end able to deliver that, that, that real game. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, I would say, I mean, I, I'll just pepper that with uh, some of the pre-registration that we've had and some of the emails we've seen, we've actually seen, uh, I can't release any actual details, but what I would say is, <laughs> I, it, it was the, you should have seen the smiles uh, on the faces of the team when when some of the description of of people pre-registering and and the questions we were getting it was like hey I'm you know this which was not a game developer you know I'll, I'll say you know a mailman for instance or whatnot it was like you know but I've always wanted to see this game can I still apply and we were so excited because it's like that's the point the point is that this is your opportunity to make your dream come true. So we that's why we were hoping, you know, in essence, in the way that the funds are, you know, were, were chosen to roll out here is that, you know, it's worth the investment to finally invest in yourself and make your vision uh, come to life. And so like Felix said, you know, bring, bring people around you if you're not exactly, we'll say, uh, uh, you know, a developer yourself or, you know, even, uh, 
code positive. Can I use that term? <laughs> um, uh, you know, there are there are resources in order to pull people together and, and you know align under a vision and then you know really give it a shot. Completely. And Justin, I wanted to um, go back to what you were saying earlier about indie games. I completely agree with you. I also love seeing game developers who come outside of like this traditional background of like working at a very big game studio because yeah. you see a lot of like risks being taken. You see a lot of like different kinds of art styles, a lot of like different pathways within the game that I think might not be as commercial, but I think is like highly, highly artistic and just a true pleasure, I think, for the person who's playing. Yeah, um, so. That's, that's what I'm hoping for too. Um, cool, so um, a technical question. So what sort of languages can be used to develop games on the internet computer? Yeah, so this one to Michael. <laughs> yeah, um, so, you know, I think there's a two ways to kind of tackle this one, right? Um, I know the vast majority of gaming development right now is done in it's C Sharp, I believe, correct? Um, and I know what we've seen thus far is many of the people who've been building up video games utilizing things um, like Unity or Real Engine um, and compiling that down to WebAssembly because on the internet computer, you would be able to utilize those and can get them compiled down to WebAssembly to get your, I mean, your game launched. Now, what I'm very interested in us doing by the time we actually get to that April um, date is really focusing on more documentation and more tooling. Um, for people who are interested in building um, directly utilizing some of these additional languages that are commonly used in game development. But, um, you know, all in, you know, you should be able to still build out with any language um, or any, um, you know, bit of tooling that compiles down to WebAssembly. Uh, so I think that's where I would land on that one. Cool. And Michael, follow up question. What sort of benefits are there for video game developers who decide to choose to build on the internet computer as opposed to another platform, whether in the realm of blockchain or not? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I, I think it unlocks, you know, a lot of these different use cases. Um, and I know we we're talking a little bit about this at the top of um, the chat, but, you know, the idea of being able to incorporate, you know, um, native tokens that actually have some meaningful real world value that can then go and be traded on decentralized exchanges or maybe even, you know, the centralized ones um, down the line, unlocking this entire, you know, game fi and play to earn, um, you know, economy. Um, that's exciting. But, you know, what I think I'm really interested in seeing um, and what I think, you know, will also be a really great opportunity for the developers out there are just, to, um, you know, playing around with some of these more intricate elements and value propositions, right? So the idea that, you know, you could potentially have individual assets like, you know, items and weapons and armor and things like that, you know, acting as NFTs and tradable, you know, on third party, third, um, party marketplaces. Um, same even with the players to some extent, you know, the characters, right? Um, you know, I've been a big video game fan since I was probably like seven or 10. And the vast majority of the games that I personally play have been, you know, like RPGs um, and MMOs, right? Um, and at least within the MMO ecosystem, there's always been, you know, this um, underground ecosystem of third party, um, you know, buyers and sellers for different, um, you know, characters and all of these things. And, you know, one of the things that I think the IC can uniquely unlock here is us getting to a point where um, users for the amount of time and effort that they are putting into these video games truly actually retain some value over that time that, you know, they put in. Um, and, you know, in my mind, why shouldn't a, a user um, be able to trade or buy or sell, you know, accounts uh, or based on, you know, the amount of time that they've put into building out that character. So it's little elements like that, um, but also the interoperability play, right, and the composability of canisters. And we're hoping that we also see some, you know, um, gaming developers choose to really zero in on that element um, and dive into opportunities to have, you know, environments and characters and portions of their game that are interoperable with, you know, either, um, you know, subsequent versions of the game or perhaps even other things that are happening in the ecosystem, um, let alone diving into the whole metaverse conversation, which we could stay here for a while on that one. So, you know, I, I, I think the short answer is, um, you know, I think there's a lot of really great opportunities um, for building out these video games and unique propositions that are specific to the IC. Um, but to really kind of list through those, I think you kind of just um, start thinking about the things that are really exciting about, you know, um, 
the blockchain and you know the space in general right it's things like the de- the dexes it's things like you know the nfts it's things like the interoperability oh you are 100% speaking my language so like when you think about the context of nfts or gaming within the realm of blockchain and crypto it's not like a standalone silo right there's an interoperability story that can be told so something that i find super fascinating is the intersection of decentralized finance and nfts so for example let's say you are super super skilled within a game you have amassed a bunch of items uh, in game items that are highly rare could you collateralize that and take out a loan against that and like you know down money for a mortgage or something like that. It's super, super interesting, the potential of like what all of this means when everything is interconnected. Um, Cool. So let's move on to the next uh, question from the community, which I love, and I would love to hear from Felix and Justin on this. The current wave of blockchain games has the potential to supercharge the competitive gaming genre, where NFTs let you take ownership of unique in-game items and take advantage of tokenization that backs the game economy. What do you think blockchain brings to the genre of story-driven, deep character building, single-player games? Did you write this? Because I could (laughs) I actually did. It's not a planted question. It's genuinely from a community member. (laughs) You wrote that. I I love you. You're great. Um, I mean, it it goes back to what Michael was just saying. You know, at at the end of the day, when when, when you create those characters in those single-player games that you invest so much time and energy, you're now able to create, you know, I mean, uh, or participate or have, depending on these these games or self-generate. I mean, you know, again, this is a, a full sandbox of possibilities, but you're able to have these items, these customization, a character that's truly unique to you. And in the same way that, you know, each person is a unique individual, you can make a character that is forever a unique character in the game that can only be, played or owned or participated with by by you and you and your team and you and your friends, you can really create a a truly unique being and set of items within a game for that genre. Uh, And I I think uh, I think that's pretty cool. For for me, uh, you know, my background is story. I was a writer for most of my my Hollywood career. So what I would say is uh, using the technology that's available, right? Through through IC, blockchain, NFT, whatever we're talking about. What I like to think of it as, you know, based on the vision, yes, we can talk about items and ownership and, and you know, um, ownership beyond maybe one game to another or whatnot. All of that is really interesting, you know, from a player base, I think, um, and, and where, you know, where it can go. What I also like to think about and dream about is in, in some ways, uh, what some of that ownership could allow you to do when it comes to, you know, maybe the story-based games or the community-based um, participation of said games, right? Uh, that's always what that, that gets me excited is like, if I have a, a part uh, of, you know, from an investment standpoint, I own something, you know, within this game. Now, maybe I get, you know, either, uh, you know, I, it could be as simple as, as voting rights or a say or whatnot to be able to actually see a story go from one way to another to another, right? I, you know, from a, a story base, that's the kind of stuff that gets me excited is that, you know, in essence, you know, for anyone here that maybe has played MMOs, like Michael said, or, you know, more deep lore type RPG games, um, they don't even have to be that deep, just anything with a story, being able to really not just open up the world, uh, you know, to a player base to say, hey, you come and play my story uh, and, and, and experience your character in my world, but to say, actually, we're going to give part of that world back to you as the community and say, you get to determine where the world goes or whatnot, you know, in the future. I think that that from a, a, a feeling of sort of ownership of the IP from a player base is really exciting. I would love to see the technology and the, the participation go in that direction. Definitely. That's what, that's what, I hope that answered questions. <laughs> no, absolutely. Michael, Michael, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, just one quick point. I was going to say that I, I think that's a really, really um, interesting point. And I really do hope that we see some gaming developers choose to start diving into this. Um, because w- when people dive or, or chat a little bit more about, you know, blockchain based gaming, a lot of times it really, the conversation is around the game fine, the play to earn. Um, but, you know, with the tokenization of projects um, and hopefully games as well, um, you know, I, I am excited to see what could potentially be done on the governance side and what that could mean for the future.
nature of gaming because um, for the vast majority of games out there right now, um, and I know there are a couple of examples of games that try to do this, you know, um, a bit in the past, you know, it, it really is a bit of a black box, right? You as the player really don't know what is coming, nor do you really have a huge say in that besides what you post on forms. So I, I think that could be a really interesting place to go in. Just wanted to chime in with that. There's so many stories in the gaming industry of gaming developers not being in tune with what the core fans want. And you can look to examples of like changes that are made to RuneScape or League of Legends that just have like a huge sort of backlash <laughs> from the community. And this is like a really cool way to get that feedback loop, to have ownership, to have a say in like your your favorite games that you spend a lot of time playing. So a um, couple of questions I uh, wanna make sure that we get to. So uh, what are some existing or upcoming crypto or blockchain games that you guys are interested in? Can I take this one? Yeah, you take okay. this one. Go ahead, man. Yeah. Yeah, so the, I, I've been seeing a couple of ones, but predominantly within our ecosystem. Um, and I know that might sound like a shameless plug, but I'm interested to see, you know, kind of um, how things turn out for, um, I know ICP Squad, they're working on their game. I'm really excited about that one just because I want to see more um, use of the um, upgradable NFTs. I think that's a really exciting use case that I want to see flushed out. Um, I'm really excited to see um, some of the work that's happening um, on the Metaverse game that, of course, um, John is doing over at Pocus Studios. Um, I'm really excited to also see a bit more of the work that's coming out of um, Cosmicrafts as well. Um, and I saw actually someone mentioning um, having Cosmicrafts participate in this. And, you know, I hope they do. I, I think that they could be a really great use case for following along and seeing what's happening there. Um, but to be frank, you know, I don't have a good insight into some of the other blockchain-based games that have been popping up um, in other ecosystems beyond some of the metaverse-based ones. I know that there's a handful of those. Um, those are interesting to watch. Um, and, you know, I'm not, <laughs> yeah, and I think the one that I'm interested in seeing, you know, kind of when they are dethroned would probably be Axie. Yeah, com completely. And I, I just wanted to chime in with what Justin was saying. Justin and Felix were talking about earlier. Like there is a lot of play to earn games that exist right now, some of which I think the main draw is the ability to earn crypto while you're, while you're doing it. But truth be told, uh, spicy take, they're not good games. So <laughs> I hope that through something like Achievement Unblocked, we're able to really just capture the best of both worlds. So um, I'm going to end uh, with one question. So this is a super interesting one from the community. What, is there going to be room for GameFi infrastructure projects? Um, so we there's this community run hackathon in the past um, where somebody created a leadership board called Metascore. So basically the project itself might not be a game, but it would allow game devs to build better games that interoperate. Op, interoperate. So for example, GameFi markets, IC gallery game expos, community game accessory creation, and so on and so forth. So I, I think the short answer on this one is it may not be the most appropriate for the competition itself, um, assuming that, you know, the output here isn't a game that is playable by the broader um, ecosystem and the masses. However, you know, I think those types of use cases and those types of projects are things that I would absolutely want to make sure that we are highlighting and we are kind of building up as we start getting into the early days of this project um, and this, this competition. So um, for those of you who may have joined late, you know, I, I did share a little bit earlier, just a quick Google form um, for anyone out there who might have some um, experience building on the IC or may have a project like one of these, um, but may not necessarily be um, applying or capable of applying for the competition itself. I see a lot of opportunity for us to do seminars and webinars, um, share code and make all of the gaming developers that are joining the ecosystem and participating in this aware of projects like this, right? Because, I mean, that's one of the great strengths of the internet computer, right? It's this interoperability conversation. It's this composability conversation. So making sure that um, all of the developers who are joining the competition and perhaps maybe even starting from scratch are aware of all of these different tools um, and figuring out ways to leverage and utilize them. Amazing. So we're just coming up on time. So wonderful conversation. Everybody thoroughly enjoyed it. 
Big thank you to Felix and Justin from United Esports. Super excited to see what's to come. Big shout out to Michael Hunt for spearheading this initiative. Um, we're definitely going to have you guys come on in a future community conversation when there are more updates. But in the meantime, I'm going to drop a link in the chat. So this is where everybody can sign up for Achievement Unblocked um, or, or, or receive information to be able to sign up in the future. So thank you, everyone, for tuning in and see you at a future community conversation. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye.